Madam Speaker, Honorable President and Deputy President, Honorable Members, Fellow South Africans and guests in the gallery, Bagaetsu Dumela. The weight of our history lies heavy upon all of us. We must never forget past injustices, and we must put right the wrongs of the past. Four days ago, we commemorated Nelson Mandela's historic speech on the Grand Parade upon his release from prison 27 years ago. As we reflect on the state of our nation, we must ask ourselves, fellow South Africans, how many South Africans enjoy the freedom that Madiba spoke of that day 27 years ago? Three days ago, we marked the 51st anniversary of the forced removal of the people from District 6. People were wretched from their homes and families were ripped apart. I am sure, fellow South Africans, all of us will join me in saying, oh, no. never, never, and never again. Yet two weeks ago, a story broke in our news of people torn from their lives and their families right here in a democratic South Africa. We heard of how thousands of mentally ill patients were carted off to unlicensed NGOs without telling them or their families where they are going. We heard how 94 patients tragically died of starvation, dehydration, diarrhea, pneumonia, and seizures. The ANC government under this president did that. From the Marikana 34 to the Esidimeni 94, this government has turned against the people of this country. This is a Madras government. Speaker, when we proposed a minute's silence to mark the tragic death of the Esidimeni 94, the ANC said no. At a stroke, the ANC showed what it really thinks about the vulnerable members of our society. You see, the only thing that this party cares about is power. It cares about getting rich. It cares about big projects like the arms deal and the nuclear deal that are conceived. Because in the words of President Kalama Mutlante, they offer opportunities for certain people to take and make money. It cares about the perks of office, the cars, the travels, the blue light convoys. In fact, the ANC has stopped caring for ordinary South Africans. The ANC has turned from liberator of the people to the enemy of the people. On Thursday evening, we gathered to watch the President's State of the Nation address. Long before we entered this chamber, it was clear that this government wasn't on the same side as the people. Streets were closed off and barricaded for miles around this precinct. There were riot police and razor wire on every corner. There were snipers on the rooftop. There were soldiers with automatic rifles pacing up and down Parliament's Avenue. This, fellow South Africans, wasn't the state of the nation. It was a state against the nation. The ANC, 
on the other side and the people on the other side. The liberator turned oppressor, the true enemy of the people. In his novel, 1984, George Orwell said, if you want a vision of the future, imagine a boot stamping on a human face forever. We saw a glimpse of this on Thursday night and it looked very much like our painful past. The police in riot gear, the deployment of the army, the screams of female members of parliament as they were being punched and kicked. Indeed, a boot stamping on a human face. South Africa will never forget what happened on Thursday. And we will never forget the reaction of the man at the center of it all. The president who stands accused of 783 charges of corruption, fraud, money laundering, and racketeering. The president who built his house on the backs of the poor South Africans. The president who is selling Order, our country speaker. to foreign agents. Order, Honorable Maimane, please take your seat. Yes, Honorable Member, what are you rising on? Our speaker, I rise on a joint rule book uh, 14F. Yes, the relevance proceed. of the State of the Nation address. The member is not debating the State of the Nation address because he was never even in the, in the, in, in the, in the State of the Nation Honorable address. Honorable member, he that's left. not really a point of order. Let him raise whatever points he wants to raise. Honorable uh, Maimane, proceed. This is the president who is selling our country to foreign agents. We will never forget how he laughed. Yes how he laughed at the violence visited upon members of this house. It was a laugh indeed of the enemy of the people. The ANC has become the party that Chris Hani warned us when he said, what I fear is that the liberators emerge as elitists who drive around in Mercedes Benzes and use the, res the resources of the country to live in palaces and to gather riches. While the connected few gorge themselves on caviar and champagne, the young people of this country are yet to taste the fruits of freedom. They are the born frees, but everywhere they are in chains. They have been forgotten by the ANC, the enemy of the young people. They, fellow South Africans, are our lost generation. The lost generation is the nearly six million mainly black South Africans who can't find work. The lost generation is the half a million, mainly black South Africans who disappear from our education system each year. The lost generation is the three million South Africans under the age of 25 who are not in employment, who are not in education or training. The lost generation is what the quarterly labor force released today tells us that in fact a further 340,000 youths have joined the ranks of the unemployed in this past year. Speaker, when the president stood on this podium to talk about radical socio-economic transformation, he wasn't talking about this lost generation. Don't fellow South Africans be fooled by the language of President Zuma's speech. His project and that of the ANC is the accumulation of personal wealth. Noble causes like land reform and black economic empowerment have been captured for the benefit of the ANC's elite. When the president talks about accelerating land reform, what do you really mean? Honorable, my money, please take your seat. Speaker, don't give him an opportunity to make himself a fool. No, just take your seat. Yes, honorable member. Honorable Speaker, Honorable Speaker, I rise on Rule 14L. Honorable Speaker, last week Thursday, the President outlined a clear program for South Africa. All I'm hearing from Honorable. the leader of, of the opposition is whining and crying and complaining. 
Tell us what the TA is going to do. Honorable Don't whine member, and complain. you are now debating. Please take your seat. Proceed, Honorable Maimane. You see what the president is talking about. For us, about black economic reforms, it's in fact more dodgy deals for ANC cronies. He's talking about a narrow based land deals like the Limpopo farm that Minister Nkwinti lined up for his ANC friends. It's 130 million rands of public money that went to enriching two ANC cronies while 31 farm workers went unpaid and a productive farm fell into disrepair. When the president talks about BEE and the black industrialist program, what he really means is a scheme to make a hundred of his closest friends and family very rich. The president said nothing about the government's plan for a trillion rand nuclear program. We all know that the ANC is forging ahead with a nuclear plan that will enrich the president and his friends on a scale of looting not seen ever before in this country. President Zuma wants us to believe that the MPRDA bill proposed state mining company will benefit the people. But we all know that these are just moves to line ANC cronies with lucrative mine deals, moves that will scare off investment and threaten thousands of jobs. On Thursday, we heard about the same old nine-point plan, sprinkled with a bit of stopgap populism, like land expropriation, talk of a state-owned mining house, and threatening the banking sector. Mr. President, are you seriously so afraid of the EFF that you would follow their policies? You must, in fact, know that these policies will lead us down the same failed path as Zimbabwe and Venezuela. The fact of the matter is that your plans have been tried, they have been tested, and have failed everywhere they have been tried. And when you go backwards, this is where you will end up, as South Africa cannot go backwards. Honorable members, we have to look to the future. The young people of our country want a future they have a say in. They don't want to be dependent on the state and a shrinking economy. They want to be independent with opportunities they can use to be truly free. The South Africa we are building is a South Africa where young people will come first. And so the DA has started to map up a rescue plan for this lost generation, a future we all believe in. Fellow South Africans, we will build a lean, caring, efficient state tasked with creating opportunities for people instead of a bloated, corrupt state that is only dragging us backwards. We will harness the energy of thousands of committed teachers and principals to lead the charge in turning our schools around while shielding our children from Satu's destructive influence. We will invest in training existing teachers and recruiting more teachers with excellent skills, particularly in maths and science. On a we'll point explore of order, the feasibility point of, order. of bringing back... Where's the point of, uh, Madam point Speaker, of order? Where? Today, yeah. we are supposed, in accordance with um, Rule 14R... Honorable Maimane, please take your seat. I am making an explanation to say that today's debate is, ba is based on the state of the nation address. The DA is grandstanding to say that they got a plan Honourable. outside the state of the nation. Honourable. Let them tell us about their plan in the West Please Cape allow and in the metros. Please to finish his speech. Proceed, Honorable Maimane. Yes, Honorable Stenazen. Madam Speaker, that is now the third interruption that is the leader of the opposition has had to interrupt, had to sustain. I know. None of them have been points of order. It's very, very clear that they are using vexatious points of orders to disrupt the speaker. 
When the opposition defy your rulings, we get thrown out. Honourable Can you please be consistent? TNA is and I've, I've stopped them. I've told them to take their seats. I've told them that these those were not points of orders. Honourable uh, Maimane, please proceed. Can we have order, honourable members? Fellow South Africans, we will give parents a greater say over their children's education by exploring the feasibility of a voucher system and to ensure that teachers and principals are supported and held accountable for the performance of their learners, we will seek to create a national education inspectorate. We'll ensure that school leavers improve their chances of finding work through a host of diverse education, training and internship options. Those qualifying for higher education will be able to access funding through an expanded national student financial aid scheme. Our poorest students will be comprehensively supported and the missing middle who cannot secure funding or bank loans will receive support proportional to their family's income. We also aim to give matriculants who don't qualify for university a free year of technical and vocational training uh, for a year. One of the biggest obstacles when it comes to employing young people is the lack of experience in the workplace. So to bridge the study work divide and to equip graduates with the necessary skills, we will invest in a private sector apprenticeship program as well as a nationwide government internship program across all departments. But preparing the youth for the job market is only one side of the equation, the supply side. The other half is about creating demand and ensuring that we have an expanding labor market to absorb millions of young South Africans. And this means sustained, inclusive, economic growth. Only the private sector, fellow South Africans, can create jobs at the scale and pace South speaker? Africa needs, which is why we will radically reform the labor regime to Honourable, support job Honourable creation. Speaker? Honorable member, what point are you rising on? I would like to know if the leader of the opposition is willing to take a question. No, and it's nonsense. Order, speaker. Honourable, honourable members, I'd like to remind all of us that this is a very serious debate on the state of the nation address of the president. I really would like to prevail on all of us to please allow this debate to happen with the dignity it deserves. One of the biggest obstacles proceed, when it comes to employing young people is the lack of a Yes, Honorable Patel. All right. Honorable Speaker, I'm rising on George Rule 14P about the use of the offensive language. The leader of the opposition has just said the member of parliament is speaking nonsense. Can you rule on that, please? Thank you. Honourable members, honourable members, honourable members, I still prevail on you all and us all for our tempers to go down. Yes, language might be offensive, but it's not always unparliamentary just because it's not nice. Proceed, honourable my money. Fellow South Africans, we intend to turn South Africa into a nation of entrepreneurs. The small, medium, and micro-enterprise se sector will have our full support because this is where 90% of job-creating uh, potential lies. We will do everything we can to minimize the regulation they face, including exempting both small businesses and young people from voluntarily opting out of the minimum wage legislation. We will start a jobs and justice fund like Singapore and Colombia have done with much success to give entrepreneurs a access to capital they need to start and grow businesses. 
We will invest in the kind of infrastructure needed for inclusive growth and not projects designed to give kickbacks. We will, fellow South Africans, stop the nuclear deal and open the electricity grid to more independent power producers. And we'll invest heavily in broadband and integrated transport system as we're already doing here in the Western Cape. We will partly privatize state-owned enterprises by offering shares to employees and excluded South Africans as well as the private sector. This will free their boards from capture by the politically connected elites and give South Africans capital to gain access to the economy. We must adopt a once empowered, always empowered policy for the mining industry, and we will reject the investment-killing MPRDA bill. For us, fellow South Africans, black economic empowerment is about mass inclusion rather than elite re-enrichment. It will reward companies that put young black South Africans through school and give them mentorship through apprenticeships to grow expertise. We will empower South Africans by giving them ownership of the land they live on through a transfer of title deeds, and we will identify the vast tracts of government-owned land for redistribution. We will incentivize commercial farmers to establish farm equity schemes where workers share in the ownership of existing successful farms, allowing for a progressive transfer of ownership and skill. We recognize that inclusive growth requires a peaceful, healthy society, along with an honest, caring, and capable government. And to this effect, we would put an extra 50,000 police officers to the police service and will train them and resource them properly. We'll ensure that they're on the streets, active and visible to communities, instead of simply sitting behind desks. We'll bring back the specialized police units to face the most serious crimes head on. Some of these, particularly drugs and gangsterism, are really a lost generation's cry for help. We will build a caring state that will protect all of our people, particularly the most vulnerable in our communities, people such as the Esitimeni 94. Unlike the government's national health insurance, our health plan won't bankrupt the country and can be rolled out in half the time. Ours will be an honest, capable state, not one that militarizes our parliament, not one that deploys the army to protect one president. We will stop corruption. We will trim the flat of our bloated, inefficient state by halving the number of ministers, capping spending on consultants, making tender processes transparent, and cutting. Order, Honorable Maimane, please take your seat. Uh, thank you, Honorable Speaker. Is uh, the leader of the opposition ready to take a question about why he visited Israel and the mayor of the city of Chani visited are you, are Taiwan you outside to take a government international relations policy? Honorable member, if you want him to take a question, let's allow us, allow us to ask him. Honorable Maimane, are you prepared to take a question? No. Okay. Please proceed. Through clean, honest government, we will make our cities attractive to investment, turning them into places of jobs and growth. The DA has inherited metro settled with widespread corruption and bloated administration. We will turn cities like Nelson Mandela Bay, Chwane, and Johannesburg around to make them work for all South Africans. <laughs> Speaker, Ours is a dream of a South Africa in which black, white, colored, and Indian all contribute to our nation's prosperity. And if 2016 has taught us anything, is that there's a movement of South Africans who share this dream, who will sweep this government out and bring change. The weight of history lies upon all of us. We can choose to remain trapped in it, or we can choose to transcend it. In the words of Reverend Jesse Jackson, at the end of the day, we must go forward with hope and not backward with fear and division. We will, fellow South Africans, move this country forwards instead of backwards. We will work with the people of this country and not against them. 
We will bring hope to this lost generation. Amrena Bulukesi Chabasai so Ngosi Sikeleli Africa. I thank you, Kia Leboha and Gos. The Honorable Coleman.